All right, I'm going live, even though I'm not ready and things are totally bollock stuff. Top chat, live chat, live chat. So we get YouTube to pop in here. There it is. There, okay. We are live for what that's worth. Let's see. Paul's here. I'm, I, I'm, uh, I think I'm going to have a problem. My, my lighting is thoroughly bollocked up here. Um, for whoever the wise guy was who uh, complained about the fact that I'm at 100,000 subscribers and haven't figured out how to do technology. I could not agree more. Um, I have a friend moving up from Florida, um, and by the end of the month, we hope, who's going to take charge of all that. And we're going to be better. Let's see if I can do this without glaring. I got this like right in my eyeball. And I can't see a thing. And the, the wires, I, 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 have a, I have a question. My question is, how do wires never get touched? And the next time you go back and look at them, they're so twisted up with everything else that it's, it's like a spider's web that's been mashed together. That's what the way my wires are. I mean, I can't, I don't even know what I've got. I, I need to move this light and I can't because it's so, it's so twisted that it's shortened by virtue of being twisted. I don't know. That's why I decided, screw it, I'm just going live. And the lights here, the camera is, is not, um, compensating for the lights in the tank and so it's just a big glare and if i shut off something it doesn't make it better it makes it it makes it worse so bear with me for another few weeks until i get all this together and it'll be better Zazurian Earthos. Hi, Father Fish. I talked with you earlier today. Yes, you did. And we had a delightful time. Uh, you're in Texas, as I recall. Uh, and and setting up your first 75, 75 gallon tank, I think it was. So welcome. Nice to have you here. I need to get you wrenched up. Let's see if I can add moderator. Did you do? We got that. Royal fish. Do you have any, <laughs> any tips on keeping chili reservoirs? Chili, C H I L L Y. As a matter of fact, I just bought about two dozen. And I've got them spread out in some tanks. I'll tell you one thing you don't want to do is, is put them in a tank that has fish in it big enough to eat them. Because I put four of them in here and they're gone. The, now I've got cardinals in there and they're fine. But the reservoirs are not to be found anywhere. I do have some in with uh, guppies. And I've got some in with, uh, in with my... Uh, licorice karamis and they're doing okay so maybe we'll look at them later if i can untwist enough uh, wire i know me father fish were schooling what we're schooling let's get you a wrench we're gonna pass out wrenches here so you need to get this light move where it's not blocking I don't know. Am I? 
it all visible, more or less. I got a bunch of lights on, but they're not doing much. All right, Connor, oh, excuse me, Connor Bradley, how do I go from having a sterile aquarium to using your methods? Do I just add a ton of plants and some stuff from the pond outside? Also, said severums that always eat my plants. Well, gee. <laughs> I don't know. Um, yeah, a lot of plants, uh, sand. You, you put, put cap your, I don't know what you got for substrate, probably gravel. Cap it with a couple inches of sand. Start building a food web. Uh, and start adding plants that your subrooms are not going to chew up. That might be sword plants, anubias, things like that. Java fern, see how they do. They're slower growing. Now, the the the, uh, uh, the Amazon sword is not slow growing. That's a, a faster growing plant. But Anubias and Java, those are slower growing. Box Master, I knew we need plants to keep. I know we need plants to keep aquarium healthy. They cost a lot in Europe. You need like 20 of them to start a nice tank. How do I do? How do I do? Uh, I buy it at wholesale, but I sell it really cheap. So you can get it from me cheap, but not in Europe. That's a problem. Let's see. Did I do Connor? Did I do a wrench? Add moderator. No, let me let me get this wrench thing worked out because Foxmaster plants if, uh, as a last resort or maybe a first resort. See what you can find growing native. Plants growing native in bodies of water near you will do perfectly well in your aquarium, and there's nothing wrong with that. Where do you think the plants we have came from? They came out of somebody's backyard, every one of them. <laughs> so uh, get out there and pull some stuff out of some ponds or streams or creeks or whatever, and you'll be able to um, you'll be able to get your tank full of plants for no money at all in little or no time. Works really well. How can I buy your substrate additive in Europe? I believe we have somebody who's who is either already marketing it or is very close to. I do not believe they're on our our channel yet as a link, but we do have someone in the EU in the UK who is selling Maeve in the UK. If you will go to fatherfish.fish. Fatherfish.fish. I need to post that. Let me see. Banners. I'm going to do a banner. Create a banner. And we're going to call it Father. How about www? www. Dot fatherfish.fish. Without the typos. Fatherfish.fish for all your aquatic needs. It's got the links for everything on it. I'm going to scroll it across the bottom. And let's see if it works. And we're going to add the banner. Do something. And we're going to scroll it. And it's not working. Enter banner. Ticker. Show. There it is. Look at that. All right. We'll just let that roll. Oh, but there. Comments. Back to comments. Um. Anyway, there there is somebody who will be available, making the the uh, substrate available shortly. If you contact the EU uh, supplier, they're in touch and they're working out the details. So, 
try to get it through. I'm not, I'm not privy to the all the details of that. Any advice on growing banana? Banana plant, Nymphoids aquatica. Well, just put the tips of the bananas down in the substrate, just the tip. Um, if you've got any kind of nutrition there at all, it'll start rooting and it'll start sending up shoots. May take a little while, but it'll grow, it'll happen pretty quickly. Once it gets going, um, it should be okay. Shouldn't be a problem. There are no real tricks to growing uh, banana plants. You just got to get them down in dirt. Now, I have put banana plants in vats that have totally rotted out. And I really don't know why. Might have been no light. Might have been too cold. Might have been this. Might have been that. Might have been lack of nutrients. I When I put a banana plant, in in a tank i've got some here there's one there there's one back there there's one there i think um they just grow i mean i don't do anything this one i don't think it even has the bananas down in the soil i think it's it's kind of raised up a little bit so it's not growing real fast but it's got four or five leaves on it Four leaves and a stem. I put it down in, it keeps coming back up. So I put it back in again. Uh, somebody asked a question a while back about a clown knife that had white stuff on the gills. Anywhere, any way to share our tank, says the Mossery. Yes, on Wednesday night, that's what we do. We do show and tell on Wednesday night. Um, so just come on over. It's uh, 6 o'clock Eastern time, Wednesday night. No, 8 o'clock. 8 o'clock Eastern time um, on the Father Fish channel on Wednesday nights. We're there for an hour, and we have people coming up the whole time. It's show and tell. And Bluebird says, I'm so happy to have found Father Fish. He has changed my life for the better. <laughs> Amazing how a fish tank becomes one's life. I know. It's, <laughs> I'm all about it. Clash with night needs a wrench. I can tell by looking. And Clash by night says, my black ghost knife has some whitest patch near its gills is that fine or is it something to worry about i don't know it doesn't sound good um it could be an injury it could be it could be a bacterial infection it could be nothing it could be parasitic get on the discord channel i will post the link Unless somebody else can do it, let me do it because I know how to do it. So it's a permanent link. Um, get over on the Discord channel. We've got a bunch of people over there sitting around waiting for somebody to ask them to do something. Particularly figure out what the white patch is on on your clown knife. So by all means. Come on over. Here's the link. Right there. Where? It's there. I know it's there. Uh, click on that and get on. You need to sign in. I think it's it's an app. You need to uh, you need to download the app. And uh, and uh, somebody said to me today that that they they read the reviews. Now, I don't know whether that was the reviews of Discord in general or of the Father Fish Shoal. And probably Discord in general. And they were very negative. And I said, well, don't believe it. If it's, if it's negativity about the Father Fish channel, it's sour grapes. 
probably somebody we kicked off for being a jerk. Um, it's a wonderful place, and you're going to love it. I promise. So make the effort. It may be a little difficult for you to figure out, but hang in there and try. You'll get through it, and you'll love it. I guarantee it. Hello from Gibraltar, Glenn Pratt. Hello, Glenn. Linda Sapicha. Linda, we need to get Linda a wrench here. And as moderator. Now, you understand, everybody who has a wrench is a moderator. That means you get to put people in time out. You don't want to do that unless there is serious justification for it. Serious justification. Not somebody disagreeing with Father Fish. That's allowed. What's not allowed is, is calling him an idiot unless it's made in jest. A jester idiot. We miss you so much down here in Venice as b, &B. Why, thank you so much. I, I I stay in touch with lots of folks in Venice. Uh, just a lot of good friends. Let's see. Where are we now? I, I went all the way back to the beginning. Now I'm coming up, catching up, catching up. Content is important, not quality of videos. I appreciate that, Stefan. I do feel a need to do a better job. I have an editor who is a professional editor, and he really is extraordinary. I mean, he takes the worst garbage and turns it into something borderline majestic. It just never ceases to amaze me. Dead man's will, he goes by. The man lives in... in a state in India, and I can't remember this state. It may come to me. Central India. Bluebird. So cool to watch. The old ones are worse quality. New ones are amazing. Yeah, it really has gotten better. It's gotten better. Two more big spawns, says Andrew. Zazunthoros. Zezwan, Zezwan, Earthos, spell backward, thought tree, <laughs> now, Zez, something, the Vossary, exponential wire tangle growth, that's right, Andrew Foley, what made me join YouTube, that's a really good question. Let me answer the question. I joined YouTube in 2012. Actually, I did not join. My computer tech joined for me. And he came over to my shop every once a week for two months to make videos and we made videos and he posted them and that's all i knew about it and then i just kind of i it's not that i lost interest it's that i never had any interest until many years later when i discovered that youtube was so significantly impacting my business. So I got on and a few months later started making videos and then went back and tried to find the old videos and I couldn't because I didn't have the password to the account and the fellow who had set it up did, did, did not know what it was. So I copied the videos and I have them pasted. I have them in, in our library. You can go to them and you can find them. They're in there way back in the beginning. 
since then, I have made over 1,500 videos. And one of them actually went viral about eight, seven months ago, eight months ago in April. That would be seven months ago. Went viral. And to this day, that's the cleaning. Never do stop cleaning your tank. It gets 7,000 views a day. Has since pretty much the beginning. And is responsible for virtually all of the substantial growth that has occurred on this channel. Without that video, we would not be close to where we are. I have tried a thousand times to duplicate it and never gotten close. Except, except for the shorts. And the shorts are something else again. I have several shorts that are well over a million views. By the way, the cleaning video is approaching two million views genuinely viral the 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 shorts we decided to start doing this late in the game we're now doing two shorts a week they account for 75% of the views on the channel they account for 80% to 85% of the new subscribers. We have 12 to 1,500 new subscribers every day. We have a million views a week. A million views a week. Imagine that. It took me three and a half years to get to a million views. Now I do it in a week. My income, and you're going to love this. My income, four months ago, three months ago, was $5,000 a month. My income, this is from Google. My income today is $4,300 a month. <laughs> So I'm losing money by being by doing shorts. Here's the difference. A regular video pays one cent per hundred views. A thousand views is a dime, ten thousand views is a dollar. A hundred thousand views is ten dollars. A million views is a, is that right? Something like now, it's, it's not that bad. It's bad, but it's not that bad. Shorts pay one-tenth of what regular videos do. So while I'm getting more views, I'm earning less money. Now, my, my, my sense of this is I'm cool with it because I'm increasing subscribers that is increasing my base. I've got more views, which means more people are coming to the channel. So at a point where I reach the number I'm trying to reach, which I think, frankly, is going to be wherever we're at at a given point in time. Right now, that point in time is the end of the year. That could change to June or even sooner. At some point in time, I'm going to decide I'm done building. It's time to go deep. We're trying to do a little bit of depth along the way, but we're really not going deep yet. Now, the reality is I'm getting a lot of pressure from staff. I have currently one, two, three four, five, six. I have six people on staff, six people who I am paying 
monthly. I have two more. One, I have one more coming in this coming week. Another one coming in the end of the month. That'll be eight people that I'll be paying. That plant business is carrying that. We're up to 200 orders a week. The holidays have devastated us because we we lost one we lost 25% of our ship dates. We ship Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday. We lost Monday, which means we lost Tuesday as the receipt date for our product. It went to Wednesday. So we wound up with two ship dates a week rather than really four. That slowed things down, but it has not slowed down the orders. We're not going to get caught up this week because Monday is a holiday. It's a federal holiday. We're going we're gonna to be up against it again. We're hoping because we've ordered a lot of extra material and we have a new person coming on to be able to get caught up this week. We're not very far behind. We're about 30 orders behind, but we have to date 120 orders that have come in so far toward this coming week. That's 150. We'll get another 50 by Tuesday, so we'll be at 200 orders. I'm hoping we can get them all filled and all out this week. If we can do that, we'll at least be keeping up with people. I've got folks saying to me, Where's my order? It said it was coming and it's not here. It's it's the holidays plus the fact that, that uh, my major packer got sick two days in a row and, and that set us back. That was Christmas. So she actually came into work sick and and busted her butt. Anyway, all of that is to say we got a handle on this thing, and we're moving forward with it. There are a lot of bumps and giggles in the road, a lot of ruts. We're trying to work out a lot of issues, and we haven't done that yet. This is not a smooth running operation yet. We're still shifting gears. We're still hitting ruts. We got a bunch of people on Discord who are doing an, an absolutely heroic job of dealing with everybody who comes in there asking questions, and there are lots of them, literally hundreds a week. And we got a crew of, I don't know how many, 50 people who are diligent about trying to find the right answer to the problems that folks are bringing. On top of which, we have another group of people who are working, helping us with, with the YouTube videos. Another group who are doing research for a PDF book we're trying to put together. There are an awful lot of things going on. And we're trying to move forward with it. And it's there a lot of starting and stopping and starting again. I'm hoping. In the next few months, we can kind of get things smoothed out and, and have a, a clearer sense of, of uh, a forward, forward momentum with quality. So there's that long explanation. For what purpose, I don't know. I just kind of got hooked on talking about it. What do we have here? Ah. Uh, Oh, John Larson said, I twist my wires so the dog doesn't eat them. I don't have a dog. Royal Fish, do you have any tips on keeping chili res for us? Oh, my. Tips on keeping chilies. No. No, I guess I really don't. You know, the main thing is to, is to not keep them with fish that'll beat them up. Anything that's got any size on them, it's going to go. They're a tiny little fish. 
They really cannot tolerate any aggression at all. And they're a quiet, peaceful little fish. It's not like they're up there dancing around all the time. They're rather still and quiet. They don't move around a lot. Um, so you want other little, tiny, gentle fish with them. A lot of plants, a lot of places for them to develop some real security. You know, these people who say they don't want a lot of plants in their tank because they want to see their fish. That's rather foolish. Because keeping fish in a bear tank, the kinds of fish that we collect, the kinds of fish that are in the hobby, keeping them in a bear tank keeps them in a state of constant stress. Constant stress. Every single one of these little fish in their wild natural environment hide. They hide. They're in a shadow. They're behind a plant. They're behind a rock. They're near plants or other kind of hardscape. They're in and out of leaves. They are in an area where they can feel secure and protected. You put them in a big open tank and they go zoom, 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 zoom. I got a, an email, a comment from someone this week who said, I put a lot of plants in my tank and my betta didn't like it because he couldn't zoom, zoom, zoom anymore. And I said, that zoom, zoom is stress. It's not something that's normal for a betta to do. So let your fish feel secure. And that, I think, for chilies and a lot of other, especially very small fish, is really, really critical that they are secure. The other critical matter, of course, is to keep the tank well balanced and stable so it's not going vroom, 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 one direction or the other. By food rotting or water changing or whatever is going on, let it be stable. I, was, I watched a bit of a video this week. Guy had just done a 50% water change on his tank. He had apparently dumped a lot of food in the water. And it clouded the water. So he pulled out half it, did a 50% water change. Every fish came to the top gasping. Some of them doing this, floating upside down and darting back up. Near death. He had, if not killed every fish in his tank with a 50% water change, certainly stressed them to the point of death. They were all hanging at the top, trying to get air. He obviously put water in the tank that had chlorine in it, that was not oxygenated, whatever, and stressed the fish out. More fish die from major water changes than any other single cause. Don't tell me how important it is to do a 50% water change every week. It is the single most destructive thing you can do to your fish because it creates a stressful environment. Now, maybe they're big old Oscars who've been handling it for years and they can cope with it until they can't. But it ain't a good thing to do. If you must do a water change, do 10%. That's all, 10%. If you want to do it every day, do it every day. If you want to do it two times a day, do it morning and evening. Two times a day. That's not going to stress the fish. But doing this 50% water volume change instantaneously, it's like taking you from a hot shower and throwing you into a snowbank. It's like that. 
It's like taking you out of one environment, putting you instantly into a radically different environment. That is what it is. That is what it is. Why in the world would you do that? Think about what you're doing. That's not a good thing to do. Where's my camera? There it is. Uh, looking at here as though the camera were here. Uh, righties, 50 gallons, says Zizwan, Zizwan, Stefan, when are you coming to Vegas? I've never been to Vegas. Um, when, when they set me up with a, uh, a venue, then I'll come. <laughs> and oh me, and oh me. And then I think I gave you a wrench, didn't I? I did. Hagen Hill. Always wondered that when I was a DJ. I put my cords away neatly. But by the next show, they were a tangled ball every time. I know it's weird. I think they have a life of their own. I think it's I think it's it it it's cable sex is what it is. They just get it. It, they, it happens late at night in the dark. And they go. Incredible. I don't show you this. It's insane. You probably can't see it. Let me show you. These wires. These wires were straight. Look at that. Look, and this is under there and under all that. I don't know how that happened. I have the, look, this is twisted around there. Everything gets twisted all the time. Insane. And I got my hand wrapped around a wire doing this. So I can put it back together. This lighting is all wrong. I need a better camera is what I need. And I don't know how to buy one. I've looked at cameras... And I can't figure it out. I've, I've got the best one I know how to get for this purpose. Anyway, what else is going on here? We're at 545. 545. Let's see. Let me get back to 545. Lord, that's an age ago. That's all. That's two hundred comments back. All right, <coughs> all right. We're gonna go from here. Fish lip, Casper on knee jaw. How do I make sure fish don't die when you add fish? Don't understand the question. When you add fish from a sterile environment, uh, I, I do recommend an acclimation period. Uh, putting fish uh, from a sterile to a father fish tank, the, the, the only thing that's required is to do it. Just to, they're, you're, you're putting them in a better environment than they've come out of. So don't worry about that. Um, Maiden, Maiden Jagger, get you a wrench. Do, 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 do. And there is the Discord link. Been at these place, completely changed by plain gravel to one inch soil, two and a half inches sand, planted 80 degrees, community fish, and now babies. Wonderful. Good job. Infinity. I I, saw, I was watching a video this week. A fellow was saying that this whole natural tank deep substrate thing is far too complicated and far too difficult for a beginner. Uh, and I wrote in the comment, you should try it before you pass judgment on it. He obviously hasn't tried it, or he would know better. 
I have Discord that charges my phone. Does that count? I guess. Can you share a little bit about my Corsi and the substrate? Uh, Doug Dougal White. It's a really interesting issue. Fungus in aquatic environments is is a very dominant part of the of the uh, biological environment, as much so as is bacteria. We don't really know much about the species, though. There has not been very much research of uh, fungal species in aquatic environments. A little bit, but not much. And we certainly uh, are not moving it uh, by species. We do more with bacteria. We do very little with that. So what, what I've recommended is gathering from the wild, but I also put uh, a, a, a mix mycorrhizae, which is terrestrial fungus spores in the supplement for the substrate with no real knowledge that it's doing one earthly bit of good. There has been no negative feedback. I would not expect there to be. I mean, if the fungus all dies, it's not going to cause a problem. There isn't that much of it to begin with. It's very expensive, and we don't put very much in. I do know that if you let that bag sit for a month, the, the, the fungus in it will completely encapsulate the material in the bag, which is a good thing. So putting it in the substrate, mixing it in with that, there are enough spores there and enough of a variety of spores for, we hope, some of them to be able to catch. Now, we've not been able to research this yet. It, it, it's a fairly difficult process. We're trying to get a lab set up. We have a bit of one now, and we're putting a little money into that in the, in the UK, <clears throat> getting a lab set up where we have a, 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 um, a research biologist who will be able to test some of these things. So far, we've been looking at some other stuff, but we're going to look at that and make a determination about it. Good question. Don't have a good answer, except we're trying. Let's see. William Avery. Hello, hello. Cornwall is here. Mr. Erie is here. Andrew Foley. Andrew said, I got muted for one day for helping someone who needed help with goldfish. You got to watch that stuff, Andrew. We, we were very rigid about certifying people to provide help. And it's, it's not so much that there could be bad information, all that, although that certainly is an issue. It's more to the point that we are trying to to put everything in terms of a natural aquarium. So we want the advice to be focused specifically on how do we solve this problem in a natural aquarium with natural techniques and approaches. That requires a certain amount of experience, training, and frankly, for our purposes, it requires some certification. So we do put people through that certification process. Now, I know, Andrew, you're further along. You're further along than, than probably you've been evaluated to be. So ask someone, ask a shark, ask a, a barracuda to, to check you out and to certify you to get you to a more advanced level 
where you will be able to provide the kind of help we need to provide in the Discord server. So, sorry for the long explanation, but we've struggled with this a lot and have come up with a way to be able to do it that allows us to keep faith with our basic purpose, which is to teach natural aquariums and to teach it in every aspect of the hobby. I'll tell you what, Cornwall, the editor for the channel, he spends 10 to 12 hours, 10 to 12 hours straight nonstop work doing a regular video. And at that point, he falls into bed and comes back the next morning and puts another two to four hours in. So those videos get an enormous amount of work. And I'm paying him half what he's worth. So if we ever get to the point where YouTube starts making money, then the people who are helping to build that channel are going to share in that and share equally in it. Uh, is 82 degrees a safe, safe temp for all common plants? Uh, yeah, absolutely. There are very few plants that are living in water. Now, shouldn't say it that way. Any, any semi-tropical or tropical plants are living in water that gets into the 80s routinely. Plants in, uh, in, 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 in the Tennessee mountains and other mountain ranges where the water stays cold to get around, will not tolerate, at least the fish won't, an 82 degree temperature. The plants may well. Plants are enormously flexible. I got a bag of plants back today that we shipped today Sunday. Oh, get this. We shipped these plants out on Tuesday. They were delivered to California on Thursday. There was no apartment number, so they were not left. They were returned to me on Friday. I got them delivered by the post office at my door this morning. I opened the box. The plants had been in that box for just under a week. They were in mint condition. Mint condition. I put them in my tank. I will send. Uh, I had already been in touch with the customer. We got his apartment number. We're sending him out fresh plants. He'll get them this coming week. I thought that was pretty impressive. And pretty impressive of the post office to be able to deliver and return in five days. Pretty good. Let's see. Ricky Anderson did a water change with my coolie. It changed back to its original color. It's been 24 hours. No longer brown and gold, more like pink. He's probably stressed, Ricky. It should be okay. It should come back. Honestly, folks, honestly, water changes are dangerous things to do. I know there is there is a whole culture out there of people who do 50% water changes every week. And it is a big risk. At some point, at some point in time, Doing that will kill every fish in the tank. It may take 10 years, but by God, it'll happen. Because the water supply will not be absolutely consistent forever. I've been to water treatment facilities where they put chemicals in the water. And let me tell you, they don't measure them. They take bags of this and truckloads of that and dump it in. 
no attempt to measure it. Now, this was not in a major metropolitan facility. It was in a minor metropolitan facility of about 50,000 population. That ain't tiny by any stretch. It was a multi-million dollar facility. Dump them in by the bag full. No measurement at all. So you get water sometimes with a chlorine level up to here and other times down to here. So if they're doing ammonia as well, the chloramine can get locked in at a level where it becomes almost impossible to break that chemical bond. You've got to put so much chemical in there, it's not even worth fooling with the water. And you don't know when that's going to happen. I had, I was keeping and breeding severums at one point. And I noticed that every time I did a water change, I would lose fish. But it didn't happen every time. It happened sporadically. That's what it was. It happened like once a year. And I finally got hold of the water the, the water plant, the water utility, and, and dug into this a little. And they said, well, here's the thing. In the spring, we buy water from the neighboring county. Our water all comes out of deep wells, 600-foot deep wells. But in the spring, when the spring runoff comes, we buy water from the county north of us that is impounded water. That is, it's lake, it's, it's reservoir water. That water has a pH of, of 6.0. It's very acidic. The water coming out of the well has a pH of 8.0. So here you go. I'm doing 50% water change. I'm going from 8.0 water to 7 instantly, and then following it up again with another water change, it's dropping at the 6-5 or less, all in a week, in one week. And the fish are dying. I wonder why. And you never know unless you test absolutely everything. And who in the world is competent enough to do that? Unless you're a lab tech. And it's your job on the line. Even if it's your fish on the line, people get tired. People get lazy. We need tanks that are secure, that are safe, that we can act on in a way that's, that's, that's normal behavior, that's routine behavior, that keeps it safe. Think in those terms. Don't think radical, think conservative. Think doing the simplest thing to get the results that you're looking for. Let's get down the road here a little. Let's see. Andrew has asked this question three times. And I've answered it, I think, twice, but he keeps asking it. That was 6 o'clock. It's half an hour ago. Maybe I should, uh, This is the third time I've seen it. He's talking about all of his, his baby goldfish. Yeah, if you want to raise goldfish, you can raise them by the tens of thousands. They throw so many eggs out. It's amazing. Sean Penny, just learn to your natural tanks. Can I keep the volcanic soil for my substrate and cap it with sand? Yes, indeed you can. Do that and then begin to build a food web. Uh, and you'll be delighted with the results. That will work out brilliantly. Zez, is it? 
is as it is. Patrick Gonzalez just had a rummy nose tetra dog. Should have buried him in the deep substrate. I I can't tell you what to do with your dead fish. <laughs> I would, I would, I would do it in an instant. Little fish, leave it. I mean, it's not going to cause any harm if you just leave it. It'll be food for everybody. Everybody will eat it. The snails, the fish, it's uh, instant food. Eerie first. Just finished gluing Java Malls to rocks. Yeah, no matter how hard you try, you always get super glue on your fingers. Yeah, it's absolutely true. Now, some people wear gloves doing it, rubber gloves. That got super glue on the gloves, but that's better probably. You peel it off. William Zapata from Columbia. Andrew Foley. Luke Goldies. Don't know Luke Goldies, Andrew. Joan says hi. Let's get Joan a wrench. Dooby doo. Let's see, Vince Janice. Well, SOE, SAEs, no, they will not. SAEs will not eat shrimp. Cornwall. Got a shower squid, you Renee. Chop up your moss. Sprinkle it on the net. Wrap the netting around the rock. That's pretty cool. Pretty cool. Got to agree. Vinity's Place. Got Java moss. Be wet when gluing it to rocks. Yeah, you don't want to dry. Um, the the super glue is impervious to water. That is, it 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 sits on the water. It does not dissolve in the water. So if if your plants are wet and you put super glue on, that super glue is going to be the outside of the water. So whatever you touch, if it's dry or relatively so. It'll stick to that instantly. So, yeah, not a problem at all. Added some java fern and frog bit. Nice plants. I'm looking for rickia and susvasser tang. I need rickia and susvasser tang. Anybody out there who's got cultures, I will buy it. Shorts money is seven tenths of a cent per thousand views. It's worse than I thought. Current videos are about three cents. That's about right. Seven, seven one hundred, not seven tenths, seven one hundredths, not even. Oh, seven one hundred. Okay, that's more than a penny then. That's seven cents for a thousand views. Current videos are three what? That doesn't make sense to me. Doesn't make sense. My views are going up and my income is going down. You're saying that there's more money for shorts per thousand views than there is for, for long videos per thousand views. And that's not my experience. Let love be love. Wondering, could you go more in depth on how to convert a 55 with gravel and fish in it? What would you recommend? Two inches of sand on top of the gravel and build a food web. Very simple. That's all there is to it, really. Oh, Zez, what are wisteria not going good at harder water? Yeah, I think. I think. <clears throat> water wisteria and probably water sprite as well. It's a fern or a fern type plant. So any any well, ferns generally are are a softer water plant. So they're going to want softer, more acidic water. Barry says, "Why didn't you tell me this yesterday? Uh, you weren't listening yesterday." People are searching for nature and peace. Amen to that. Ooh. Straight out of Carmel says, oh, there's a guy on the hill shouting. 
I got a new sermon coming up. It'll be interesting to those who are interested in Father Fish. Uh, it is it is a, a, um, a retell or a telling of my professional spiritual journey, my journey in ministry, that is. Um, it's kind of long. It's about half an hour, but it sort of covers everything. So I think those of you who are curious will find that interesting. I post those for the benefit of those who are interested. I don't post them for people who are not interested. Uh, and I don't post them. I do post them for people who think it's horrible for me to post them, mainly to just thumb, a, thumb them in the eye. Um, but I don't monetize those videos. I don't want to make a penny on them. Uh, they're there for uh, as really just to kind of keep people abreast of what I'm about on the church side of things. I am, after all, an ordained pastor, and it uh, it gives me satisfaction to be able to share what of what little bit I do along those lines. Okay, Andrew is saying content creators receive 55% of the revenue generated on their channels. That means for every $100 an advertiser spend, Google pays 55 to the creator. So I do not have any advertisers. Um, Because I'm not making that kind of money. I know if someone makes a donation, I, I get 55% or 50% of that. YouTube keeps the rest of it. Uh, I'm not I'm not aware that I have advertisers. Content creators for yeah, we got that. Receive of the revenue generated only around 18 cents for each view. $18 for every thousand views. Okay, that makes sense. And that's that's for that's for long views. I mean, I I had four million views last month. I did not make Eighteen thousand dollars. I made five thousand dollars. About one third, a little less than one third of that. So I don't know how all that works out. Discord is a. Uh, you need to go there and find it. It's a. It's a, a, a communications um, server that allows people to share by typing back and forth to each other or by doing videos or live chats with live video, any of that kind of thing. And we have it broken into a number of channels that discuss different aspects of the hobby. Yeah, making a living growing plants. It is amazing. Uh, but it's really up to all the people here on YouTube and on Discord that are making that happen. Because I'm not advertising beyond that. I'm really not reaching yet beyond my YouTube channel and, and Discord and a little bit on uh, on Facebook. All of the orders that are coming in are coming in through those sources. Um, most of it from YouTube. So, but they see there are a lot of new people coming on YouTube all the time, and a certain portion of them are, are placing orders. So when I reach the point where we've got things nailed down and can get 100 orders out a day consistently, then, then I'll look to double our, our, uh, our order level. So that means we'll get out to more. Does anyone else stare at sales too much wondering 
are they dead? I know. I used to do that. I just ignore them anymore. <laughs> Russell Jones, congratulations on making $1 million, Father Fish. Bill from Texas told me. Now, apparently, Bill kept most of it because I never got it. Infinity's place. Do you have a wrench? I thought I gave you a wrench. I did. You just haven't got it yet. Best alternative food for a baby goldfish fry. Uh, really, the very best is a paramecium culture. Uh, figure out how to do a paramecium culture. That's the absolute best. You can feed them green water. They will eat green water. But a, a paramecium culture will feed on green water. So if, if you can do that, figure out how to do it. It's really not complicated. Boil some lettuce, put it in a jar, set it on the windowsill. In a, in a few days, you'll have a cloud of paramecium. Pour that into another container, add more lettuce, and it'll fill up, and you'll be loaded with paramecium. You'll have more than you can use. And you can keep that going by keeping, by continuing to feed it. But continue to pull it out. Don't leave it in there. Use it. Feed it. It's not hard to do. <clears throat> Let's see. We're all spoiled by Amazon Prime. Ain't that the truth? Been feeding baby fish frozen brine shrimp. Oh no, that's horrible. You need you need very fine food. Very fine. Boil an egg yolk. Squeeze it through a, a handkerchief, a silk handkerchief, and whatever comes through a few drops, mix it in water and feed that. Don't just put egg yolk in a tank. You need to squeeze it through a handkerchief in the water, mix it up in the water, and pour that pour that water into the tank. If you need something instantly, use that until you get the paramecium culture going. That need take no more than two or three days. Cake delivery service. No, never thought about a cake delivery service. <laughs> Rind shrimp in jar, hard to get eggs. Rind shrimp in jar, hard. You can get eggs very easily. Rind shrimp direct sells decapsulated brine shrimp eggs that will hatch in 12 to 16 hours. Brine Shrimp Direct. They're in Utah. And they're not expensive. Two of my African cichlids had a red, have a red curved line on their front fins. Looks like it goes from top of the fin to close to where the body meets their bodies. What can this be? I, I know exactly what it is. None of your business. They're bleeding. And the reason they're bleeding is... They, they, they are in water that is too soft and too acidic. They need to be in harder alkaline water, particularly African cichlids. They need to be in water that's 7 with a hardness of at least 150. I've seen it on a lot of cichlids. Doug White, Dougal White, check out Father's link for Discord. Yeah, I can link it again. I can put it in again because I got it up. That's all I got. I'm good at this. There it is. Discord link right there. Need to sell brine shrimp eggs. I don't know. They're so easy to get. I could include them. Actually, that's not a bad idea. I could do just the, the regular dried egg. 
I could do more of a food line, actually. I think when I get to the point where I need to expand my income, I will add more, more product lines. I also will need to redesign the site because right now it just lists everything alphabetically, uh, which makes it impossible to find things like food. Unless you look under F for food. And you'll find it there. Rowdy Eats. Thank you for your peaceful, interesting, and informative videos. I have no aquariums or fish, but were I able to, when I am able to do so, I will follow your methods. And we will be thrilled to follow yours. Rowdy, be sure to uh, get on Discord and post pictures of your tanks once you get it going. You did say when. You did say when. Means there is a point in time. You do aquascaping fish tanks, says John. I don't, Tisha does. I will be. I'll be talking to Tisha about that because I'm going to do all of the new tanks in the studio at the web, at the, uh, um, at the warehouse as, as nicely aquascaped tanks and i will have the the professional assistance of tisha the grandmaster facilitating that process and that'll be soon eerie first don't look down on me from your mansion i don't need a mansion eerie <laughs> it doesn't take a match Uh, imagine face shredder that is moderator you got it is 82 safe for all plants by and large yes rare that it would not be zez says you don't need a thousand trumpets now yeah you only need two william avery hello from new jersey I need to come visit you guys in New Jersey. You had so many good fish stores. I need to visit them. I was up uh, at Super Super Cichlids um, yesterday. Went up to visit. They are amazing people. Just amazing. Uh, they're doing so many things that are so exciting. Um, I can't even get into all of it. I will go up there and do a video. Maybe, I don't know when. Maybe one Sunday evening we'll do something. They're putting in a, uh, a studio. They're building a studio to be able to get their their uh, their channel cranking. So I'll be a part of that process at some point. We, uh, oh, the, the plant, Deborah James. Let me explain this. You'll be getting more of the plants that have sold out. I still love the red plants. The red plants are a problem. And let me explain what, what happened. I bought the red plants from Dustin. I actually charged more for them than Dustin charges because I had to pay his price for them or close to it. He gave them to me at, at wholesale, but wholesale about double to triple what I normally pay for wholesale. So it was hard for me to offer them at his list price. Nevertheless, I wanted to try it mainly to see if I could keep them. And I couldn't keep them. I I I sold some because they were slow movers. I refrigerated them. They lasted about one week and then they all melted. They just went to mush. I, I I am resetting up that system now with tubs that will be lighted and dirted. So I'm going to be planting plants like that when they come in and not refrigerating them unless I know they can keep that way for a month. There are very few plants that I can do that with, but I will do that with them. Hair grass is one. Chain sword is another. Uh, 
things like that that I can keep in bags in the fridge, I'll do that. Otherwise, they're going to be planted. So this is going to be a little complicated because I'm going to have to have charts on the tubs showing what plants are where and then have them gridded off somehow so we can tell them apart. Anyhow, we're going to do that. Um, I need to get back to um, just uh, to Dustin. We're setting up a system on our Shopify that will allow me to list items from other Shopify stores where the order will go directly to them. So they will gain the benefit of that. Now, that may mean you get an extra shipping charge. Uh, that'll be up to uh, to to the to, to the business it goes to, but it will be clear to you when that happens. So you'll be able to say yay or nay to actually doing that. Um, that's in the works. That's not ready yet. We're trying to figure out how to pull it off, but I think we got a, a lock on it. Oh dear, Yasurizaki. Is blue garami peaceful fish? He can get along with guppy or not. Blue garami. Big blue, not little blue garami. Not, not this blue garami. Not dwarf blue garami. Blue garami. Three to four inch fish. Blue garami. One of the meanest, most aggressive, most territorial fish you can put in a tank. They are, they will kill everything up to an inch. And they will beat up everything else. Blue garamis are not a peaceful fish. You can put them in with fish the same size and they will be okay. Mostly. They do tend to beat up angels. It's hard to keep them with angels because the angels just kind of sit there looking pretty and Grammys are looking to say, ha ha, little beauty, I'll show you what's pretty. And takes a bite out of her tail. Now you look gorgeous, pretty. Like that. Nasty fish. Nasty fish. Caspars. How to make sure fish don't die when you change the environment from sterile into father fish tank. Just do it. Just do it. You're taking them from a cesspool and putting them into a natural environment. They don't need to be acclimated to that. They need to be in it. Joseph, let's see, Casper, we need to need to get you a wrench. We did. Joseph, we need to get you a wrench. There we go. Joseph says, just started my first started tank, thanks to Father Fish. Pandacori's in five and four shrimp for now at 10 gallons. It's still 11 hours and 45 minutes running. Well, all right. Sounds good. You go, Joseph. Send some pictures. Take some pictures and, and put, them on, put them on there. Put them in the shoal. Am I selling aquarium cactus plants? Says Russell Jones. Am I selling aquarium? Somebody, this came up two weeks ago. Are you the same goofball? that said this two weeks ago, aquarium cactus plants. So what in the world could that possibly refer to? I can't even imagine. Not even imagine. I mean, is there an aquatic plant that burns your fingers? There are coral, to be sure. Freshwater, a cactus. Freshwater. Gee, you know, that it, it just utterly stumps me. 
utterly. U-D-D-E-R-L-Y. Utterly stumped. Uh, Joan, two weeks into a 10-gallon. Next step to start a food web. Uh, get some culture. Do your resurrection jar. Collect some leaves from the ground. Put a few of them in the tank, but a little bit of that resurrection material, the, 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 the broken up leaves, the, 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 the detritus, a little bit of that in the tank. Not a lot, just a little. And then every week, add a little bit more of each. And you'll gradually get it built up. And it will catch hold at some point and begin to exceed the ability of the fish to eat it all up. And at that point, you've got a culture going. Then it says, his blue garami is peaceful. Hang in there, Affinity. Hang in there. Joan, did I give you a wrench? I thought I did. I did. Let's see. Oh, Moscow guppies. Love them. Love them. I really like guppies. I've got some of the Japanese blondes mixed <laughs> mixed in with um, the, the double blacks. Why I did that, I'll never know. Dooby 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 doo. David Piper, good to see you. Yeah, Affinity's saying, just do it. Just do it, Casper. If it ain't broken, don't fix it. Luke Deshano. Yeah. What are changes or a killer? I mean, I've I've talked to the guys, some of the guys who are into major water changes. And and when I corner them and say, okay, you're doing 25% water change every week. You're doing it consistently. You're doing it because you got it on a schedule to do it. When is the last time you lost a bunch of fish doing that? Never had. Come on now. How long have you been doing this? I've been doing it four years. When is the last time you lost a bunch of fish doing it? It hasn't. Been. Golly, it's been. It's it's been a year and a half. Okay. Cool. A year and a half ago, you did a major water change and you lost half your fish. Did that teach you anything? No, I just did the same thing again next week, and it was fine. And I said, well, are you prepared it, this coming week or the week after or six months after that to lose half of your fish again immediately after doing a 25% water change? Well, it'll probably never happen again. You play Russian roulette often, do you? That's Russian roulette with your fish. You got a loaded gun. It's one one bullet in it, and it's got and it's got an unknown number of chambers. And you're pulling the trigger. Every week you're pulling the trigger. And it's fine. Look at this. Nothing ever happens. It's fine. Look, I can pull the trigger. Anytime I want to, I can do a water change. Look at that. 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 Bah! Whoa. What happened? There it is. There it is. You don't need to be outrageous about it. You want to do water changes? Fine. Do water changes. Do them. Every six hours. But just do 10%. No more. 10%. In fact, I'll, I'll do you one better. Get a drip system that allows for exchange. They exist. They're out there. 
put a tiny drip of water in the tank constantly, you'll be changing about 2% a day. That's 15% a week, 60% a month. Depends on the size of the tank, of course. Smaller tank, more. That's 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 called an open system. That's water, new water flowing into the system continuously. Do that, but do it slow enough so the new water coming in has a chance to be assimilated rather than terrorizing the rest of the water. Think of water as a living thing. It is a living thing. It's not an organism, but it contains organisms. It contains all kinds of, of, of uh, electromagnetic forces. Be gentle with water. Introduce it gently. Do water changes gently. You can do it continuously if you are gentle. And you will not have a problem. Hmm, where are we going here? I just saw something strange. Anybody, something about dehydrated? Where was that? I had to look at where it was. Uh, has anyone tried making a resurrection jar in the winter in Canada? Frozen solid. Yeah, I expect. That might be a problem. Yeah. Tube junkie. Hard to do cactus in an aquarium. Fish story is here. Hello, Alex. A week I've seen near eight stay still if they're cold. You smell it in there. That's the truth. Take it out and smell it. You don't even need to get it close to your nose. Just take it out. If it if if you got a handful, oh, I don't want to talk about it. There is little that is more nauseatingly disgusting than a dead mystery snail. It is a horror, a horror. <laughs> David and Nadi. All right, let's move forward. Moving forward from Alex. What is going on here? <clears throat> Dooby doo. Jamie O'Farrell. Signs on guppies when they're ready to birth. Yes, there is one very obvious sign. Obviously, when they get close, they get a big belly. The the uh, um, the the area. I don't remember what it's called. It, what's it called? The area at the back of the fish will begin to square off. And it'll get dark because you'll see the eyes of the fish actually developing. And then the 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 delivery tube where the babies come out will it, it will protrude a little bit and it will square off. When you see that squaring off, that's 24 hours. That's gonna happen real quick. It's happening now, probably. So look look for that. What is my brain's not working real well today? Did I did I give Jamie a wrench? I did. Jin Jin Red Song. Thank you, Jen. <laughs> Ray J says fish story. 
Worried about spider spider eggs on leaves. It's really good food for the fish. It's really good food for the fish. Do not worry about it. They're not going to escape. They're not going anywhere. They will be gobbled up. Not a problem. Powdered water. I sell it. It's rare, R.C. Savage. I sell powdered water. I do. I do. It's called dirt. And I sell it for $20 for, for a two-cup bag of it. So you'd be amazed what's in it. Very impressive stuff. Oh, two, two teaspoons of air, says, says Stan. Yeah, I thought about selling air. The problem is the delivery system. I can get the packaging. I can get that right. I can't deliver it right is the problem because it requires sucking it out of the bag. And I don't have that worked out yet. Once I do... We'll be selling air. I don't have really good air around here, though. I mean, there's some places that have much better air, much better air than here. Hmm. Ah. Sago plant lady, do a 25% water change as needed. Yeah, I would lower that. I've, I've done it. I did it. I did it here. I have well water, so I have a lot more confidence in well water. I did 25% uh, water changes on everything yesterday. With the well water, I'm a little safer. Powdered water is snow or ice. That's good. That's very good. Very good. Of infinite jest, of infinite jest, of infinite jest, that is moderator. You got it. Ex desolate is saying planting the plant one inch in the sand. Wallstead says directly in the soil. If you put it the way we, well, she's saying that. Because her soil is right up at the surface. She only puts a little bit of gravel on it. We put two inches of sand. A couple of things. We put two inches of sand over that substrate. The substrate is not just plain potting soil. It's not garden soil. It's not just plain dirt. It is a combination of soils mixed with a greater combination of supplements. So we got a lot of action going on in there in the first couple of months. You put plants down in that, those roots are going to burn up. Don't do it. You got two inches of sand, put them one inch in the sand. That soil is going to be rising up. And as it does, the roots will meet it and they'll take the nutrients out that it needs. That happens very, happens very quickly. I need to get something to drink here. Oh, excuse me. I don't know what I got in my gut, but it just uh, surprised me. Be right back. I get some water. Oh. Uh. All right. Uh. John Fraser, I only do my water change two times a week because I don't have my fish way you do it. Why? It, it, why? 
Um, yeah, whatever, John. Don't know what that's all about. Rod depends on tap water. Certainly does. Certainly does. Cat toes. Tank is 12 days old. Tenants are definitely there. How long before they fade? Uh, you may need to put some uh, uh, some, char some charcoal in there, some, some activated carbon, activated charcoal to get the tenants out. Yeah, otherwise, it could take a while. It could take a long while. It could take, like, forever. Yeah. At what level of nitrate should I do water change? You need never do water change based on nitrate level. It's meaningless to do it. It is impossible for nitrate level to go over 400. I really believe 350. I've had it up to 350. And that was after years. Um, and beyond that, so many different kinds of algae will infiltrate that tank to drive it down, that it doesn't have a snowball's chance. A laboratory um, experiment was, was done with nitrates a few years ago, <clears throat> in which they tried to make that determination. When did nitrate level, at what level was were nitrates toxic to fish? Once they got over 300, they could no longer continue to get it to rise uh, naturally. They had to. They had to do it. They had to do it mechanically. They had to actually add nitrates to it. They got it up to 450 before they began to notice any ill effects from the nitrates. 450 is virtually impossible to achieve in any kind of aquarium. It acts like an algae sponge. It just sucks it in from the air. One algae spore hits that water and it's gone. <clears throat> it's just gone wild. It will multiply every minute and double and double and double and double and double and all in the process, driving those nitrates down. It simply is not an issue. Need to add roadie rainwater or add soft tap water or evaporation top offs. Well, they will cause it to get harder and harder if you do not have adequate plants because the plants will take that hardness out of the water and cycle it. So with the deep substrate and with plants, you get a cycling effect that I I am I am putting hard water in these tanks as replacement water routinely. Been doing it now for a year and a half. Now I don't do it often, once every two or three months. The hardness today is the same as the hardness coming out of the tap. It simply has not happened. I have not had the hardness go up. I have never seen the hardness go up. I know that's the popular wisdom, but frankly, I haven't seen it happen. And I've tested water for 25 years, and I've never seen it happen. Now, if you do not have plants, if you've got water that is evaporating, you're replacing for evaporation continuously. You have heavy evaporation, you don't have fish. You don't have anything else much living in that tank. The hardness will go up. Absolutely will. Guaranteed. But if, if you have anything that is absorbing those minerals, making use of the minerals in the water, which plants do, which algae does, it isn't going to be an issue. It What, in fact, it does is build the volume of biomass in the tank. Now, it may well be that at a given point in time, the biomass maxes out to the point where it cannot increase anymore. 
and if mineralization continues to be pumped in the tank, I would imagine that it, that something would happen that would probably result in the death of a lot of plants and the immediate growth of new plants and algaes that would absorb those additional uh, uh, nutrients and would and and the dead plants would then enrich increase and enrich that soil one of the things i've seen in ponds and you see this in pond environments if you go down any depth into the mud like down below two or three inches once you're down in there you're you're at a level that doesn't exchange that's not exchanging it is it is rank it is utterly rank if you go down below that it begins to harden into clay the it literally breaks down to the point where only the minerals are left and that's what clay is clay is made of those minerals that are assimilated into water and become excess and are precipitated further down into the substrate, such as to ultimately become a layer of clay. I expected to hear cheers or something. Silence. Crickets. Again with the crickets. One more time with the crickets. That may be the most brilliant thing I have ever said. And what do I get? Let me let me look. Let me look. Let me look at the bottom. <laughs> I get any suggestion on best plants that help with ammonia. Rod, I'd be thinking. R.O. Alex, I like soft water too. Nothing, nothing. Look at this. Nothing. Not a comment. None. <laughs> oh, dear. This is why I'm going after a million subscribers. I'm going to find one. I'm going to find one. You just wait and see. There will be one. Where are we here? What time is it? We got half an hour. All right. We need to do something here. Uh, Hakuna says heavy evaporation. 350 from the type A50 tonight. Yeah. Are you doing goldfish? If you let it with plants, they'll pull it down. Also, deep, straight, deep substrate will pull it down. A couple of things that will work in your favor to make that happen. Yeah, I don't have soft water. That's one of the things I'm looking forward to. I'm getting an RO system hooked up. I'm going to have soft water tanks in uh, in in the in the shop. I should not call it a shop. Tap water is 30. Wow, that's really low. Uh, what else here? Eerie, good night. Nice to have you with us. Duckweed. 
Yeah, duckweed's good. Duckweed helps. Free chicken treats. David and Naughty. My substrate is mostly pond mud. Stem plants die fairly quickly. Is there a stem plant out there that can handle a very, just add more sand? Put another inch of sand on top of it, David. That'll pretty well solve the problem. Because that, that mud is going to mix in with the sand, and that'll, that'll, um, that will, um, what's the word? What's the word I want to use? Dissolve, fall, solid, what? Word, word, word. Can't find a word. Thin. Isn't that weird? Put water in milk. What does it do? Too weird. Yeah. Lindsay Barr. Got plants for me that didn't make it. Let me see what this is all about. Wish my plants you would leave them. I planted 3G. Uh, post the first messed up and I can't afford them. Um, send uh, Lindsay. So, do me a favor, Lindsay. Send me. Send me your order number if you still have that. If you don't send me an email and ten dollars, and I will replace the plants. I'll send you a new batch out, no charge, if you'll pay the shipping, which is ten bucks. Happy to do that. Duckweed and water lettuce. Fast growing plants, any fast growing plant. And that most of the stem plants are pretty good because they're fast growing plants. Is fluoride an issue in tap water? Tape water, it says. I, I don't believe so. I, I have yet to hear anything about fluoride. <clears throat> Even goldfish, Lou, how could you? I know. Lil dissipate, dissipate. Now, not the right word. Not the word I'm looking for. If you make something a liquid, dilute, dilute. That's the word I'm looking for. Thank you. Tina had it. Tina Marie Payne. Right there. Dilution. Wrong bit. Well, they all need a lot of iron. Oh, I had one coming up. Had I, I include heat packs in some of their shipments because it gets cold out there, Andy. And I want to protect the plants. Now, generally, that's not needed because plants can tolerate temperatures down to 33 degrees without being severely adversely affected. They can't freeze, mind you, but they can get close to it. Nevertheless, I've begun including heat packs in some of our shipments going to northern climes, like Minnesota. I had a, a customer on Discord who said, I got your plants and I planted them. Now I was mixing up my soil because and and I took the little bag that came with the plants and I opened it up and I poured it in with my soil and I mixed it all up. And then I put the sand on top and I planted the plants. And everything is doing fine. Did I do wrong? <clears throat> Well, I quick Googled heat packs. Iron and salt. Sodium chromide. Iron and salt. 
So I thought, okay. Type of response. Well, I put iron in my supplement. And I, I, I put sodium bicarbonate, magnesium, Epsom salts. So I also put a little salt in there. So, no. While it was the act of a dunderhead, it will cause no harm at all. Not to worry, you're fine. I do not think I will recommend doing that. <laughs> Something bigger than duckweed. I'll tell you what's bigger than duckweed. Have I got one? Thought I did. No, I don't. I should. All right. Now I gotta put it all back together. Oh dear. Really looking forward to getting John up here. I I'm now the mic is now coming apart. We really, really ain't doing good. Okay, are we back? Oh, I have to do that again. Uh, are we back? 
Wait, what time is it? It's only 7.35. I froze. That ain't all I did. I froze. Am I now, am I back? Am I okay? All good. Oh, amazing, isn't it? Let me move this so I can get it in front of me, more or less. Pull over a little. My camera's weird. Okay. I've, uh, that's interesting. If it's growing super fast, I have too many nutrients, not enough plants. Well, yeah, in a way, in a way, uh, but it'll catch up. Not to worry. It's a good, it's a good problem to have. Lindsay sent another email. Thank you, Lindsay. I'll look forward to getting that out to you. Speak up, Father Fish. I know. All right. Full name of the cardinal plant in your shop. I don't know. I think I've got it listed. If I don't, I will. I'm trying to get uh, Latin names for all the plants. I don't have it done yet, but I'll, I'll make a point to do that one. Val, slow down the growth of duckweed. I don't think much slows down the growth of duckweed, frankly. Other than removing, and that doesn't slow it down. Does anyone happen to know if cherry barbs can eat shrimp? Babies. Everything will eat baby shrimp. Everything. Except for snails. Snails won't eat baby shrimp. I'm back. I wouldn't trust any bars of ship, right? Got to agree. Brackish water might slow down duckweed. Might, but I doubt it. A duckweed, um, duckweed's pretty endemic. You find it most everywhere. Anything that leaked duckweed. Goldfish love duckweed. And there are a lot of cichlids that'll eat duckweed. So, yeah, duckweed is a good food for, put it, if you've got a lot of duckweed, get a couple of comets. Put a comet or two in your tank. It's not going to hurt anything else. It'll clean out the duckweed. Severums eat duckweed, yeah, true. The roaches of water plants. Uh. Lobelia cardinalis. Is that what it is? It's a lobelia. Okay, lobelia cardinalis. I don't. Uh, uh, I, my my sense is you're right. I don't have a list in front of me to be able to check it. I'll make sure I get a. I think you're right, Alex. I think that's. Exactly what it is. I think it's a lobelia. And if it is, it would be the cardinalis. That is a red plant. It's a red stem plant. Oh, there are a couple of them that I have in the package. I just don't remember. Ahmad Jute. Why you don't talk much about cold fish? Even they're the popular fish among worldwide. If deep substrate work for these fish, then set up a one tag, please. It's a request, please. You got it, Ahmad. I I was what I, I talked earlier about being at Super Cichlids yesterday, and they have a 150 with about a dozen mighty orandas uh, shipped over from Israel. Stunningly beautiful fish, just magnificent. Uh, they are utterly remarkable fish. Utterly remarkable. You can't keep them a lot of stuff, but you kind of don't need to either. Goldfish. Yeah, I really kind of want to do that. I want to get some 
Orondas probably and uh, and grow them out. Do pond do them as pond fish. I, I keep getting a little more light and then the camera compensates, puts me in shadow again. Uh, whoops. <laughs> I flipped a glass. I had my camera sitting on a glass and I moved the glass out of the way so I could read the text. I tell you, it's getting late. Have I eaten today? I did have a little bit of breakfast. I don't think I've had anything since then. A cracker, maybe a few figs. I've eaten some figs. I probably need to go get some food. What am I gonna? What am I gonna? Where am I gonna go? Last Sunday, I decided right after the the live stream to go get dinner, and I went to a brand new Thai restaurant that I just went to once before, and it was closed. Then I went to an Indian restaurant I was really excited about, and it was closed. So I wound up at a Spanish restaurant, and I don't know how to order Spanish food, or, nor India, nor Thai, for that matter. And I sat there, and a little girl who is works in the laundromat where I go came over, and she was so sweet and so kind and so helpful I just fell in love with it right there on the spot. So I was guided, clearly guided. <laughs> I don't know what I'll do tonight. I may not risk going out. Uh, all right, where are we? Ryukin. Yeah, I know. I agree about Ryukin. I was thinking about him when I said that. I said around that I'm thinking right. Okay. Guppy Smith, three snails, one blissle, blissle nose, bristle nose. Can't keep any duckweed. Good deal. Mystery snails like to eat duckweed. That's true. Do a bit on hand spawning. Hand spawning. That would be fun, wouldn't it? R.C. Savage. Remember years ago at Got duckweed from LFS. Thought it looked harmless. Wish they would have told me it would take over like a cockroach. Taco Bell. I'm not going to do Taco Bell. Who all keep kitty pool ponds? Curious how you stock them. Yeah, I stock them in baby fish mostly. Ranchu, another wonderful goldfish. The Ranchu. Panda telescopes. The the beat goes on. The pain is real. And Justin is running very late. Love you, Justin. Get some sleep. Goldfish. Don't do Taco Bell. I won't do Taco Bell. Will watercress grow in an aquarium? Watercress is a bog plant. It needs to grow above the water level. You can get it started, but it needs its leaves need to be above the water. So you can do it as a bog if you set up like a tray at the top of your tank with water and some dirt there. You can grow it that way and it will grow. Ah. Carpeting plants. Stu is having great success growing carpeting plants with no CO2, no ferts in a father fish tank. Stu, I hope you are on the in the shoal because we need to see what you're doing. Absolutely do. This is the next big challenge to the father fish system is, is to do precisely this. To get, to get carpeting plants growing in a father fish plant, father fish tank. We need to know how to do that. And we need to be able to do it dependably. <clears throat> so, uh, Stu, we want to know all about it. I've seen a few other people who have done it. 
I know it can be done. I haven't done it quite. I do have uh, some dwarf plants growing here that are kind of carpeting. It's a slow process, but they really are. I've got hair grass mixed in with it, so it looks kind of weird. I've not been able to get Monte Carlo from my supplier. Oh, somebody asked the question earlier if I can replace uh, plants that, that are out. And we got into the red plant thing. The answer is I replace plants that have run out every week. So we always have them in stock. If they run out the end of one week, I've got them at the beginning of the next week. Um, we're, we're finally getting that system rolling in such a way that we're not going to be out of, of anything for, for a week or two weeks at a time. Which once we get the, the whole packing operation up will mean we will be able to fill orders within a few days of getting the order. The only reason we have not done that has been because of the holidays and sickness and being overwhelmed by orders. It was just the perfect storm. But we'll get that back together and we'll be fine. It's not going to be a major problem. Strong light time to build a good layer of mom. That's basically it. That's right. Yeah. Jessica. Just want to say thank you to everyone on Discord, especially the staff. They've been so helpful and are always there answering questions. Amen to that, Jessica. Absolutely right. They are magnificent people. Just incredible. Where the conversation continues. Yes, it does. Other plants for hard water, other than frog bit moss and jungle val. Sword plants. Sword plants are wonderful. Uh, Sagittarius is good. Um, any kind of sag, and there are a lot of different kinds of sag. And any kind of sword, a lot of different swords, too. Hunter does stuff. I remember when I got some local plants from an online store. Never do that again. Nail eggs all over and duckweed. Got lucky and alum dipped everything. It's now free and duckweed free. I ain't free and neither. Ugh. But my my plants no longer come out of my tank. They, they come out of a they come off of a farm that is snail free and uh, duckweed free so you're not going to have that problem hair grass needs to build a root system before you really begin to get the hair if you put it in usually it'll die back and then it might be a month before you begin seeing shoots all that time, that root mass is growing. It's same with the lawn. Works exactly the same way as the lawn and for the same reason. The root web has to be well developed before you get much in the way of the grass growing. Feed my goldfish, queen ants, and uh, presumably male ants too. Breeding time. Yep. Bloodlight help my plants grow better. They do me. That's what I've got on all my tanks right now. It's it's causing some problems because it's too much light, and I'm getting uh, I'm getting green water. This has got a tint in it. In fact, yesterday I turned the light. Uh, by late in the day, I noticed the water it was was distinctly green. And I shut it off. I've had it off all day today. Turned it on for this evening. And it's better it's not gone. It was crystal clear yesterday morning. First time it's really been that clear. 
And then the algae came, uh, the green algae came roaring back. It's because I have 400 watts of LED on top of this thing. That's, I need 40 watts. I've got 400 watts. I'm doing it deliberately because I want to see what the impact is on the plants. In other words, I've got light that's comparable to natural sunlight. So that's the game plan. We'll see how it goes. So far, everything is growing. And I've, it's been about two weeks, and I've got visible growth across the board. I'm also getting more, uh, more plants in here, like fuchs, that are more difficult to raise that I'm really interested in. Now, the fuchs is not going to do as well because this is a hardware plant, and that comes out of very soft acid water. So that's part of the reason I want to be able to set up some saltwater tanks so I can get some of those saltwater plants growing. I'm losing. I'm hitting the wire again. About to lose the mic again. Uh, how are we doing time-wise? We've got five minutes left. A lot of watch. Here it is. Too much. I have a dragonfly larvae in my tanks. Um, well, if it gets big enough, it'll start catching fish. It's interesting to watch. Let's see. I don't know about this. I just ain't going to comment on it one way or the other. Uh, Brian, Brian Albanese. We have hard water, Valsor, Danubius, water lettuce. Yep, they all do. Val is a great one because it'll carpet. I mean, it'll just fill a tank. Leeches generally are not a problem. Leeches do not kill fish. They may attach to a fish and 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 get some blood out of it, but they will let go of it. They won't kill it. Um, they're just nasty buggers. And there are only a few species that do that. Most leeches of the hundred odd species, only two of them are a problem. The others. Are, are all detritus eaters. They're all beneficial. Also, fish love to eat them. So they're really <laughs> they're really good food. Seed packs online for creating a carpet usually aren't true aquatics. They all grow great for a few months, then it all melts, crashes, and spikes. Yeah, that's right. That's what I found. They're, they're usually some kind of uh, some kind of herb or grass seed. And they'll pop up, and they'll grow for an inch or two, and then they'll, they'll just go away. They'll be gone. Best way to trim plants. Up. I did a video recently on trimming. In fact, it's out right now. Watch the video. It's a short. I've got a short on trimming plants. Check it out. Just came out a few days ago. Whew. What did I eat? Something don't want doesn't want to stay down in there. And it don't taste good. All right. Skin is crawling at the mention of leeches. <clears throat> Andrew Foley, how to keep lamprey as pet freshwater. Yeah, I don't know what that, I need to get some food in me, I think it's the issue. 
Um, what do we got? We have five minutes. Is that right? Yeah. What's it say down here? Four minutes. I'll take it. Oh. Loaches and leeches. Yeah, loaches love leeches. Rogerio is indeed from Brazil. How can I add iron without using liquid fertilizer? You can actually put iron filings in. What you need is chelated iron, however. Um, that's available, actually, as a saltwater supplement, curiously. You can buy chelated iron. I think it may be a liquid, though. I think it may be in liquid form. Iron oxide. Uh, iron oxide is a powder. You can get that. It's a little tricky. Uh, it's one of those things you might want to freeze in an ice cube before you put it in the, in the tank in order to make sure you're getting it down under and not on top. Well, water has tons of iron. Typically, depending on where it's coming from, it certainly does. Witticism. What about blood meal for iron? I use that. That's precisely the way I add iron to the supplement is, is with blood meal. Are little snails bad for an aquarium? Not at all. It depends. You know, some people just don't like snails. Uh, I don't mind them at all, and I don't have a problem with them. They don't ever go crazy or anything like that. Fish hippie, night to you. Cat toes, tiny bit of apple cider vinegar, and water will help my digestion. I have some apple cider vinegar. I'm afraid it might be might have vinegar eels in it. Though. Will that affect my digestion? <laughs> ah. Fish story, snails will save your butt. You bet they will. If you have too many, you're overpaying. That's the story. That's right. We tell the same story. See there? Fish story and Father Fish telling the same story. Ain't nothing wrong with snails. If you got too many, it's your fault, not the snail's fault. You need to fix what you're doing. So the snails can go back to being normal. You're making them do work that's exhausting them and causing them to expand their population beyond the ability to sustain it long term. See there? It's not a sustainable population because you're going to get mad at them and kill them all. They don't want that. So stop overfeeding them. You're terrorizing your snails. They're your friends. They're there to save your sorry butt when you dump a can of food in your tank. Will you use any liquid to help in your cream other than to... No. No, really not. I can't think of any liquid other than water that I would put in my tank. I, well, if you, okay, here's something. If I really wanted to, to create more CO2, which I don't need to do because the substrate generates it in spades. But in that case, I would dump soda water in the tank. About a pint of soda water in a 20-gallon tank. Half a pint every three or four days. A full pint a week. In 20 gallons. That will add an adequate amount of CO2 to cause increased plant growth. The problem with that is once you do that, you're on a you're you're on a merry-go-round and you can't stop because if you stop, then the plant begins to fail.
I feed my fish rice. Not a good idea. Love me ram's horns. I do too. Born again farm girl. Born again farm girl. We have too many snows, probably overfeeding. Got my tank for you. That's incredible number just by limiting the food. That's right. It'll go back. It'll go right back. Black helmets. Oh, nice. Blue ram's horns. I don't think I have any of either. I'm going to start doing a few snails. I've got a lot of mysteries. They've spawned a few times. The assassin is on shaky ground. I can I can appreciate that. Three good meals a day. Yeah, I'm not doing it. Yeah, the plant becomes addicted to the CO2 soda. It really does. Exactly. David Attenborough showed video about Japan feeding fish rice. Well, that's all they got for food. <laughs> I feed my goldfish peeled black beans. That sounds good. Peas. Peas. The American version. Blue jelly shrimp. What kind of plants should I get for my bed? Doesn't really matter. Stem plants are good. Um, Anubias is good. That works really well. A battle for the decades. Duckweeds versus trumpet snails. MTS. Yeah, I hear you about duckweed. It's a love-hate thing, isn't it? All righty, boys and girls. We have reach the witching hour the time has come to bless you all through the week be back wednesday alex come join me i'll uh, be here uh eight o'clock my times uh that's eastern time for show and tell we've had eight ten people come up each week it's great fun uh, I invite Alex to come join me so we can talk about fish tanks and talk about what folks are doing. See you then. Join the show. Check out the channel. Watch all the new videos. Have a blessed week. Love you all. Bye for now.